Since World War II, unions helped establish a system that created the middle class and made the U.S. the wealthiest, most powerful nation in the world. But in the past few years, the system that made the American dream possible has been dismantled. And now, our economy, once envy of the world, is broken. California's unemployment rate now stands at 11.2%. That's the highest figure since record keeping began in the state in 1976. 484,000 new unemployment claims were filed in the week ending August 7th. This economy doesn't work with those kinds of numbers in the unemployment line. My dad lost his job pretty early on. We're living paycheck by paycheck. I mean, I'm a good example of it. I'm an intermediate clerk. Uh, my salary is not enough to, uh, to you know, maintain my household needs and my husband work and we're still struggling. Lost my house, lost um, everything I had, filed bankruptcy. Um, I'm starting over. He says, I lost the condo, lost the job, lost the health insurance, we're moving. It's really hard and gas prices are sky high. Drivers in California are paying the highest average price for a gallon of gasoline in the nation. The recession has played a big part in um, hurting people all across the board. We're broke. How did this happen? We didn't know where to lock it up and now we don't have anything to lock up. 94% of America's middle class no longer believes that central idea that their families will move up the economic ladder. 40% say they're barely hanging on. Corporate profits are way up. In fact, the Fortune 500 companies made a combined $10.8 trillion last year, and their profits soared 81%. While most Americans struggle to pay for mortgages and health care, the wealthiest Americans are richer than ever. The very people who plunged the world into this economic crisis have walked away unscathed. In fact, former Countrywide CEO Angela Mozillo made $470 million helping create the unstable housing market that caused the economy to implode. And why? Greed is good. Greed is right. Greed works. The corporations don't want it to be exposed that they're the ones who aren't paying in to funding a fair economy because they're not paying taxes. Bank of America paid nothing in taxes last year. Another mega financial institution, Citibank, also paid zero dollars in taxes, nothing. GE also paid zero dollars in taxes. What is it going to hurt them to pay taxes? It's not gonna hurt them. You know, they still gonna continue being billionaires, millionaires. It's not gonna even put a dent in their pocket. All those union employees, we all pay taxes. The big corporations, a lot of them don't. All these folks in Wall Street that made these bad decisions with people's money, and then nobody's in jail, nobody's being held accountable. Sometimes we're giving them more money to make more mistakes. somehow that they walk away unscathed while the families that I visit that you know they they have to they have to choose if they're between their medication and their dinner that night surprisingly the media isn't focusing on the corporations and executives who got us in this mess they have a different target the real ticking time bomb in this country unions it's not the national debt no 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 it's the debt to the unions and the union workers pensions you know everybody thinks that oh yeah the problem is the unions and it's just it's not while Glenn Beck spreads his lies, the truth is, seven out of ten public employees get less than $30,000 in retirement. While the average Goldman Sachs partner makes $600,000 a year. I don't know who's living high off the hog. It's not retired union employees. They believe that we're retiring on a million dollars a year. We don't get Social Security, so if we don't get a pension and we don't get Social Security, we, we have nothing. I don't get Social Security, so where would I get money? I would have to work until I guess I die. Most people don't realize that our pensions are majority, majority paid by the person who receives it. 
and now we're paying over 10% into our into our pension to try and help out and get it get everything balanced and back afloat. If people took the time to really figure out what a pension really means, they wouldn't be wasting their breath trying to attack us for our pensions. They aren't just attacking unions. They're attacking the middle class workers who built this country. The ones paying taxes to support the country while the wealthy and major corporations aren't. The problem is that the gap between rich and poor is getting bigger and bigger and the middle class are becoming the poor. It doesn't matter what anybody thinks, that's where we're going. It's going to be two classes, they're going to be the very rich and the poor, and we just cannot have that. We need to stop it now. Now is the time for us to mobilize. Now is the time for us to play offense. Playing defense doesn't work. Playing defense is in the past. Now it's an offense, and be the beginning of our offensive play is getting the community mobilized, educating them that we, we are being left behind. So what can we do to put our economy back on track? Join the fight for a fair economy. We've got to start making good things happen, like fixing the economy that Wall Street screwed up, putting people back to work. We are starting a movement now. It is time that we start the movement to rebuild the middle class in our country. We need to mobilize in unprecedented numbers to succeed in this fight for a fair economy. I would encourage my fellow union members to speak out. Don't be afraid to tell the truth. It's not just a union fight, it's everyone's fight. The key is unite together, speak with one voice, and remember we are one. The goal of the fight for a fair economy is to level the playing field for the rich, for the ultra-rich, and for the workers, for the working class, for the middle class, because the middle class is the breath of this nation. If we work together, it's very, very hard to ignore the message of millions and millions of people fighting for our rights. We as workers need to change the conversation. We need to get out there and make sure that the public knows. We don't want people just knowing what they saw on television or what they saw online. We have to strive to make things better in this country. Everybody should have health care. Everybody should be entitled to a decent retirement at a fair age. These are all achievable goals in the greatest country on earth.